as a child, the church was my safe place. It was the space where I gave thanks and played pranks on my friends after choir rehearsal on Thursday nights. It was my home away from home. See, it was the place where I first learned about unconditional love. But now, it's the main contributor of seeds of hate being planted towards people like me. Hands that nursed me back to health when I was young, that taught me my first words, ones who I thought would love me forever, now get uncomfortable when I come home to visit. You see, my home is not where the heart lives. It's where resentment lives and where homophobia prevails and where I'm not so secretly encouraged to date males, even though I've been out for years. One day, in a private meeting, my pastor looked me in my face and told me I had fallen from grace. He said that the God that created me in his image gave me free will to be an abomination. And without hesitation, he told me that if I didn't change my ways, God wouldn't protect my soul. I was 12 years old. The reason Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, a reason to not get deployed, a symptom of early childhood abuse, only a phase. Girl, do you want to be a man? That's too pretty. You're too pretty to be like that. That's just supposed to be ugly. It's the worst thing you can commit. It's the reason God invented AIDS, Janelle, with time. Feelings like these are sure to fade. What's well, been 20 years, and I'm still queer. <laughs> Very. And what's in between your legs has nothing to do with my decision whether or not to take you to bed. See, I never chose to be queer, but I did choose to be proud of who I am. I chose to use the fact that I'm a queer black woman who survived the unspeakable, and that understands that her survival is political to tell the world that the hate that you preach is definitely not biblical. As a matter of fact, your religion has nothing to do with my government, and my love life has no business being discussed in your courtroom. You didn't kill our spirit. We made it even though it was your plan to make us hate ourselves. We love ourselves. We celebrate ourselves this weekend. <laughs> when you kicked us out of your churches, we created our own scenes. Our clubs became our sanctuaries, and we found out that we ourselves were our own kings and queens. And it's honestly because of the gay clubs that most of us survived our early teens. See, you said Jesus died for everyone, and that his blood isn't for sale. So if it was a gift given to you and me, that means that there was no favor given based on sexuality. But because of your lies, we go back and forth, in and out of the closet, lying to ourselves and others. I lost my friendship with my mother got raped by my brothers because they wanted to make me straight to please God. Can't you see that whoever is teaching this as God's will is a fraud? So this is a message to Donnie McClurkin, Pat Robertson, Dr. Dodds, T.D. Jakes, and everyone else preaching and endorsing hate. You better change your ways before it's too late because God is love. God is peace. God is everything good inside of you and me. So if it, it only makes sense that if your goal is to be godlike, you should be love, not hate. Even if who you love is not white, male, and straight. 